Right guys, so I took my screenshots already. Uh, but as you can see, I finally finished. Uh, this is insane. I can't believe the amount of effort this took. Um, wow, like really quite a journey. Over the last... Well, when did I get this kit? Today is Friday. Today is Friday evening. So today is... Today is Friday the 17th. It is now about 8.30 p.m. at night. My load shooting is going to keep on in about an hour or so. So I've got to dip soon. Got to make this video short. But um, I think I purchased the kit on Valentine's Day uh, towards the end of the afternoon. Um, they didn't ship it to me on Wednesday. It got dispatched Wednesday because obviously I, I bought it towards the end of work hours. So this kit arrived um, Thursday morning. No, Thursday. Yeah, yesterday morning. Yeah, so I had this kit for like a day. Okay, cool. It wasn't too long. Um... Yeah, as you can tell, I've got like weird time dilation because this just took so much out of me. Um, this took was this this took a lot of effort, guys. This was like a lot of effort. Um, so the story is from the video I posted. Um, yeah, Bian Bao did some magic and managed to make this BIOS really good. Um, after I shot the video from yesterday afternoon, um, the, the initial video uh, that I made that was about two hours long. Um, after I shot off the video, I started to experiment further. When I went to gym and came back, I was experimenting. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, I can actually train, uh, I tried to train 1.425, um, VDD2, which is this, this one, um, it's, it's a different name on Asus, but it's this one, right? And I was like, oh, wow, okay, so I can train it. Um, and I was thinking, um, you know, is this, like, gonna be, um, the key, the breakthrough? Because now I can finally train higher values. Maybe I can, you know, do 7,400 and stuff. I did some testing, guys. Um, 74 wouldn't train at all uh, under any circumstance. And that has to be down to IMC limitation, just like the board limitation. So, yeah, 74 dual rank can't even train. That's almost like 8,000. Uh, 74 dual rank is like as untrainable as 8,000 single rank. It's the same kind of feeling. Uh, 8,000 single rank did train, though, a couple times. But, like, it wouldn't really get into windows properly if you know what i mean um and that's not really surprising it's a port board so 8000 is a bit is a bit uh, gnarly um 7800 is more um well actually 8000 might train now that i have um the capability of using higher vd2 but um that's uh, neither here nor there anyway so to get back top get back to the the real uh, topic of the video um basically i kept testing and the first red flag was from the YouTube video. I, I actually put it in the comments. I think I pinned it. Um, I might have pinned it. I think I did pin it in the comments. I found out that actually, like, the the first bit of testing I was doing on video, um, it was null and void. Plus, some of the testing I was doing uh, until, like, 2 a.m. this morning was null and void because I didn't realize. But these dual rank timings, like, like um the one that I tightened, like, this one, I made this one 14. I think I made this one 14. I made this one 20. Yeah, this 20 and this 14. And I'm telling you right now, well, I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but I. But if you can, if you can't, basically I made um, two of the tertiaries like one or two ticks too tight. Like, I think it was like two ticks on uh, TWR, WR dual rank, and um, uh, what do you call it? T, uh, TRDWR uh, dual rank from 24 down to 20. So four ticks there, and two ticks on the on the TWR, WR uh, dual rank timing. And I'm telling you right now, it completely screwed stability. And not not in the ways you think. It wasn't like crashing or like erroring um, so quickly. But what is happening was, um, my RAM sticks, I noticed that it was weird. I was like, how can dual rank sticks not draw more power than single rank? Why am I at like 4 watts? My sticks were literally running at like 4 watts, outputting insanely low amounts of bandwidth. And the amount of ECC happening was just so crazy that I couldn't even believe that that was the issue. When I fixed it, I was like, huh, that's what was causing the test to run so slowly? I literally could not believe it, guys. I almost fell off my chair. I was like, what the hell? How is this possible? It was like shocking. But anyway, so apparently you can't really tighten these dual rank timings. I don't know what they can tighten to, but apparently if you mess with them too much and yeah, you can really mess up stability like really badly. Um, I would almost say leave them auto because I, I don't know. Apparently they're just really sensitive. And I don't know if it's a, I don't know what the deal is, but something's up, I don't know. But whatever. Um, so I left them in auto, the deal rank uh, timings. Um, I made DD auto as well, just out of curiosity. And funny enough, if you look at it now, with um, when you have 64 gigs of RAM, the deal rank and deal dim timings actually train properly. So whereas with single rank, they get all wonky. When you have dual rank, they actually train in properly. So you can see like 14, 14, 24, 24, um, 16, 16, and 16, 16. So it actually matches. Like it's kind of weird how they, t they train like, 
you know, correctly when you have 64 gigs of RAM. It's kind of weird. But anyway, um, so to carry on, I kept testing uh, with my newfound knowledge of the fact that I had um, made my, RAMs re my RAM sticks really slow, and I had to go back and start testing with the correct operating speed, because obviously, you know, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So everything that I tested beforehand was scrapped. I deleted all of it. It was pointless, useless data, unusable, not applicable, so totally useless. I even had, like, Y Cruncher runs. Like, Y Cruncher like this was running at, like, 150 amps. Like, not 230, but, like, 150 amps, drawing, like, in, you know, like, 170 watts, bro. My CPU is in, like, 70 degrees. I was like, how is it running at 70C in Y Cruncher with 32 threads? By the way, I started testing with 32 threads because I was, like, thinking that maybe the, um, the RAM density needed, like, the capacity needed, um, more cores to utilize all of it. Um, I don't know, but whatever. Anyway, so I ended up with this whole batch of testing. Um, this was at different speeds. Um, between, uh, 6933 and 7000, I tried. Um, obviously, as you can see, I ended up at 600, like, over here. Um, so to elaborate on what I found, um, first of all, I found that Y Cruncher was really easy to run. So I could run, for example, 6933 on Y Cruncher, um, and it wasn't too difficult, even at this voltage. Like, it wasn't very difficult. So I don't know why that is, um, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. Um, so what else did I find that was kind of interesting? Um, I came to find that... When you have certain timings, like if I go to here, when you have certain timings um, overly tight on on uh, on your RAM, so like uh, per bank 390 at 7000, for example, or like, okay, well, this is too low voltage, but like, let's say um, maybe like 1.55 volt attempt. Okay, that's still too low. I want to find a place where I attempted 1.55 volts. So, um, sorry, I'm hiccuping. Uh, and this is still 1.5. Okay, this is 7032. Okay, hold on. Um, 7,030, okay, here we go. So, yeah, this ran to 11 minutes, right? This was, like, getting somewhere. Okay, in absolute, obviously, but this is not one last but It was like, getting somewhere in absolute, even. But, um, at 1.55. But the fact that I had this timing too tight on 7,000, and then the heat was building up, so the heat was building up, and when heat builds up, because dual rank sticks run warmer, because there's more, there's more ICs, so they're going to run warmer. At 55-ish degrees, um, yo, you get really unstable. So, so um, this per bank timing was suffering. Um, TRFC was suffering. This is suffering, completely suffering over here with this timing of and and um, even even uh, stuff like this 14 and, and 14 over here um, that I loosened, you know, to to you know kind of uh, bank long-term stability. Um, and then stuff like you know TRTP and you know RDS and T4 and stuff like that, like. I did some research too, uh, between testing, and um, yeah, like, I came to find that first, okay, so let me, let me make a note, because well, you guys have seen the config, I've, I have my screenshots anyway, but I made the video because I want to show, like, the config is real, so you don't think I, I cheated, plus, um, timing's disabled, so this is not, this is not, like, adjusted, this is real, this is, like, what it was testing at, um, like, I made this video right off the stop testing, so anyway, um, but yeah, here's the screenshots I made, so they're all done. Um, as you can see, uh, when I when I finished uh, one Asimus, this was the real operating temp. But obviously, when you release the load on D5, you get the bug on the hubs. So the hubs spiked to like 63 degrees, but that was a bug. Um, but I made the screenshot so you guys can see what the actual max temp was, and they ran to like 52.5 C at this uh, at the speed and stuff. And this ran the one Asimus, and then after the, after that, I just loaded up um, BST and I did uh, 20 loops. Um, and this is reboosted, by the way, because I mean, this is not. This is not very fast. Like, 6800 is pretty low on this motherboard's PCB, so this shouldn't have any problems retraining. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, anyway, yeah, my screenshots are done, so that's whatever. Um, I can close these these stress tests now, because it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say, okay. I'll make a notepad for you guys. Um, okay. So, broadcast settings, okay. I'll make this performance. Okay, so, yeah, now my, my PC is going to quiet down a bit. Let me actually make this silent. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, whatever. Anyway, so, what font size do I want here? I'll try maybe 18 or something. Um, okay, so, yeah, that's alright.
Um, What else? Um, so, this is pretty much the takeaways that you guys have to look at. Like, this is very important, right? So please, guys, pay attention to what I'm what I'm writing over here. Um, especially if you're using one osmus and you're you're struggling to to um, stabilize um, any settings. So now I have to contextualize. Let me just go visit OC OCN for you guys real quick. So let me just do that um, real quick. So if I go to my profile, I'm gonna show you. Um, so there was a guy I was speaking from Serbia, and I was kind of just trying to get help from people online like what are they th why do they think my testing is going so slow um this is before i i found that i was eccing obviously and um once i found i was eccing i actually made a post again listen guys um i realized now what the problem was um if you have your rank you know don't adjust these timings whatever and um someone from serbia was chatting to me i think it's serbia i'm not sure if he's from serbia but i think he was um it doesn't really matter i'm just just a just a fun fact i guess um where is it now Okay, there we go. So him, um, I'm not sure what, what this lag is, but I think it's Serbia. I don't know. But anyway, so um, this individual from uh, from OCN um, has been all taking with me f about this like setup and whatever. And then he mentioned this EC thing, and he was saying like he's not surprised. Now I'm surprised because I didn't know EC could like kill your uh, memory speed like that, like like less than half, um, and not error. And so, well, it did error sometimes, but I mean like it wasn't the blatant cause of errors it was just really really slow um but he showed this testing on his uh, side so he made these interesting um comments so let me zoom in real quick for you guys um man that's way too way too far anyway so he made some interesting comments he said he believes that these are his adjustments when he comes into ddr5 with these new whatever like you know kit he uses this is what he believes is um uses. now um to comment i think this could be a bit lower um this too. I think there's a relationship you can pretty much guarantee is this. Um, this is JDEC, by the way. Uh, so 260 over 320 is, yeah, so 0.8125. So if you go to 480 multiplied by 0 0.8125, you should be able to do 390 like I'm doing right now. Like you guys saw I passed on us 390. Let me show you again. Um, oh no, you can't see it in here. You can see it on um, ASRock. You... Here we go. I can't zoom in obviously guys, but you can see an ASRock I have at a 390. This is doable. Um, in fact, in my XMP profile, 480, 390 is actually the split. So they're actually like 390s per bank is correct. Um, you can get that done as long as you're not overheating um, and you're not like too high of a speed. Um, actually, you can really get it done anyway. You can really use it anyway. Like it's it's fine. Um, the problem is that TRFE and TRFC have a relationship. Obviously, you guys remember a video that I made um, last year about the F1 cars, the analogy I made. But basically, um, TRFE and TRFC have a, a relationship. Um, you know, depending on how long um you know the cycle time like the the amount of cycles is like the the, the duration of cycles so your tier refi value uh, tier, tier refi value obviously like i said in that video um, and we know for a long time you want to have tier refi as high as you can because the long the higher you have tier refi the longer you you have between um mandatory ram refresh refresh interval and and when you have a low tier refi it means you're refreshing the ram very very uh, frequently and the problem is when your RAM is frequently refreshing, it's not operating and performing tasks in that time, making your RAM less efficient to process the data. And that's the problem with TRFE if you have it too low. Um, it can also screw your latency up because of, of, like I said again, like just lack of efficiency in um, 
transferring data for your CPU. Now, uh, TRFC, the thing is, if TRFC is intervals too long and TRFC is too short, well, what do you think happens? Um, during that long TRFC period, you've now lost a lot of, um, you know, data integrity in your RAM in your RAM cells. Or, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to like explain this topic because I'm obviously I'm not an engineer, but like, um, as, what as far as it makes sense that you have obviously you need to have charge in your RAM cells to keep the data stored, right, and keep it. Um, and keep it uh, whole and um, correct. And basically, if your TRFC period is too short and your TRFE is too long, um, especially if the longer TRFE is, the harder it is as well to keep TRFC short because obviously, like, TRFC is the, the actual active period of refreshing. Like, TRFC is how many cycles pass before it's done with this refresh. And then TRFE again initiates and like, that's like, okay, now when's the next tier FC period, right? Um, or the per bank period. Now you can as you can keep tier FC quite low as long as tier FC is not crazy high. Um, or you could just water kill your dims. I mean, that's a uh, that's a broad stroke solution as well. You can water kill your dims and you have like 25 C operating temps and you can just run wherever you want. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So um, basically he found that in his testing and he does have testing by the way. As you can see, there's Y cruncher. Um, and he does he does do Y cruncher. He has some more. Um, some more uh, data here you could look at if you want to find this post by this guy. This is his name. If you want to look at this post, you can. Um, you can find my profile if you want. And my profile has... Uh, I like these posts, so if you want to come to my profile on OCN, you can find it and you can find the post. Um, but basically, he did some testing on Ycruncher, which I respect. Ycruncher is a good app for testing. Um, and yeah, he found... Yeah, here we go. He found that these... Um, these very, uh, you know, very well-known secondary values... TWR, RTP, RRD, and uh, four. Um, yeah, no, these these you know scuffed values did very well. You know, fifty seven point four six seconds, um, and then like forty six point something, forty six. I don't. It was like forty six point nine, I think. In uh, no, no, these these values did forty six point six, forty six point six nanoseconds in uh. MLC and they did like one twelve point nine. Where is it? Is it one? Yeah, one twelve point nine gigabytes per second or something of of. No, well, I think that's not correct. One hundred twelve thousand nine hundred megabytes a second of bandwidth, and then in MLC, and then the super tight values did forty six point nine, so slower latency than MLC, and one hundred twelve thousand point six megabytes a second, and in Y Cruncher. It won by maybe like point, you know, a, a fraction of a second. Like maybe I don't even know what that is. I don't know. If, I don't know what the the correct number is. It's not a second. I can tell you that much. It's fifty seven point four six seconds versus fifty seven point three eight seconds. So it's not a second for sure. Um, it's like it's like a tenth of a second. I think it is. So yeah, it's 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 basically negligibly faster than Y Cruncher. Um, I don't know two point five V a billion and um. It's more latent in MLC and has lower bandwidth than ML in MLC. So, the faster config with the ultra tight timings didn't actually like win like overall. It like kind of tied more or less. So basically, he found there's like a negligible improvement almost, and um, that's very significant because if you look at the registers, so I've I've got the the documents, I have the data sheets. Um, I can actually show you guys that on on video right now. Um, do I want to go? Well, actually, I don't want to show you guys on OneDrive. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Intel Raptor Lake documentation. Uh, man, will I find it? Ah, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, basically, like, you guys can find it yourselves, but, like, if you go look at Intel's... Intel have, um... They have data sheets. Like, they have their actual data sheets. Like, their, their Raptor Lake, um... Like how to guides like you know like a, a how to type manual yeah Yo, your cpu has a manual by the way guys if you guys didn't know that i'm sure some of you guys know that because you guys are also um tech nerds but like i think a lot of you guys maybe don't know that but your cpu has a manual as well so to speak it's not quite a manual more than it is a data sheet or a spec sheet or like a kind of like a, a guideline of explanations of how the internal like um you know operating works in your cpu like how exactly it does certain things and the intricate voltage rails and all that crap that you probably understand, you know, if you're not an engineer. Um, it basically, 
I looked at it, and the registers do line up. So you can tighten these. You can have 16T4. You can have RRD, different group 4. You can have those. It's not like, you know, it's like a thing, oh, it's it's broken. It's like you, you're tightening it past the CPU's limits. It's not actually allowed. No, 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 it's allowed. Like, you, you can totally do it. Like, it's not, your CPU isn't, like, confused. It's completely fine. Um, what this man found is that, you know, in his testing, um, those values just seem to do nothing, really. That's what he found. They just use this values. Like, you know, you can tighten them, but it's like, it's like you're pretty much just pushing for, like, negligible, if not even, like, you know, just blow for blow kind of barely even, you know, relevant performance. It's pretty much a nothing burger in a sense. And uh, QXC actually told me the same thing. QX told me, like, TWR48 is actually fine. Um, you know, Titer doesn't actually do much. So, yeah. Apparently, we've been wasting our time, guys. Um, we've just been wasting our time. And, um, yeah, so in one osmos, when you have ultra-tight secondaries, especially when there are values that tend to destabilize with heat, and obviously the longer you run the test, the higher the probability you can error, um, you find that having stuff like TWR, TRTP, for too tight actually makes stuff like one osmos after a while error out. Um, and to keep it stable, you look at the guides, and the guides show you, oh, you errored in test, whatever, test 5, test 10, um, increase VDD2. Let me tell you something. I tried that so many times, and I complained about an OCN that I couldn't follow the guides on one osmos stability because I could not physically increase my VDD2 rail up before, uh, above 1.4. On the last BIOS. On this BIOS, you can. And I tried. Believe me, I tried. I tried all the advice the guys would give, like increase this, increase that, tends to increase with, in, tends to improve stability with this. It didn't work. I'll tell you what worked. I'll tell you what worked. Um, the number one thing that worked, the biggest factor, was actually tanking this value. From 135.60 to 65.280, with FGR mode enabled, increased my heat stability tremendously. Like, absolutely insanely more stable with this value. Like, this probably was the sole reason why I got two hours done in one osmos, to be honest with you. Um, if I had to guess, probably the sole, sole reasons. Another factor, people have been advocating lately for revisiting TRAS rules. So we used to have like TRAS calculation rules with D4 um, that we typically respected. Now, for some reason, somewhere along the lines, we decided that we were going to completely desecrate these rules. And um, we started doing stuff like TRAS below TCAS and TRAS whatever. And by the way, again, I read the I read documentation. TRAS 28 is a legit value. You can run that. Your IMC can train it. It's recognized. The problem is that I don't know if TRAS is meant to be that low. I think that maybe there's some ECC going on, or TRAS might just, like, you maybe have some threshold where, like, again, like some of the subs, if you have, like, a certain level of temp hedger, maybe you can run it very low. Um, but I don't really know that TRAS needs to be so low. Like, from the video I linked uh, last year from, from uh, 10 gigahertz netburst, like, TRAS, the way he explained it, TRAS being ultra low actually doesn't always mean performance because uh, the operation of TRAS, if you understand it, it's like the CPU, um, the way it uses the timing, it's not how you think. It's not like a, a broad stroke, tighter is better. It's more like the RAS has to stay open for as long as I stay open to do work. So having like an ultra tight value doesn't always necessarily correlate to performance because it's like, it's a bit backwards. It's like, why would it, the value of TRAS being super low just means um, the row access strobe has less cycles to work within. And um, in that video, I can't exactly remember how it works, but from that video I watched last year, um, 10, gig 10 gigahertz netbus explains it very well. Like the way it explains the timing, it, you, you kind of get an idea of why TRAS lower is not always conducive to um, performance. And you can see it too in testing. Um, it's not going to make you gain like a bunch of points having TRAS down at the floor. So right now I have TRAS at uh, TRCRD plus TRTP of 24 plus burst length is 8, so I can show you that too. Burst length is found in the 64 if you go here. Um, ignore the licensing thing. Um, okay, it's all popping up. Good, thank goodness. Uh, okay, anyway, chipset. Here we go. Burst length VL8. So, TRCD RD39 plus 24 plus 8 is 71. 71 TRAS. Um, that's what I'm using right now, and honestly, I don't think it matters. Um, I have 8.8 now again, as I, as I said, because of his um, testing. I don't see a reason to do 4. There's no point. 
it's going to increase um, instability long term. It's going to be more heat sensitive. It's just pointless. What are the, what's the reason? Why? I don't care. Like, it's not going to help anything. Um, so, so why use it then? Why use it for then? What's the point? Um, TRTP24. Again, and TWR48. This is wrong. Uh, this is neg minus 3. Um, and then T432, because obviously 4 times 8. But anyway, yeah, doesn't matter. Um, different rank timings, order them out. You can't tighten them. It's too bad. Um, and then SG and DG. I made these 16. Why? Because I thought it made very little sense. That TWRWR would be 16, I make this 14, it makes no sense. And then with regards to TRDRD, uh, SG16, again, 14 is 14, and then this one is 14. So, well, I could make it 14, it would be 1 to 1 then, just like the WRWR is. But again, why should the same group timing be the same as the different rank timing? It doesn't make sense. So I was like, screw it, 16, all good. Um, bet, doesn't matter. Anyway, um, yeah, I got very frustrated, guys. But eventually, eventually, after those adjustments, like, the T refi and stuff. Uh, by the way, also like just basically having 1.5 volts helped a lot because obviously like 6080 requires 1.5 on dual rank on my kid at least and my motherboard and CPU. Um, trying like 6933 at 1.5 was stupid. Um, was never gonna pass stress test obviously. Um, and then you know uh, IMC VDD at 1.5 um, set, which is 1.475 runtime. Yeah. Um, that passes Y Crunch like I showed you, and Y Crunch just seems to not like when you have it too far away from VDD, um, from testing on the dock as well. Um, and I've seen online as well, a lot of guys are seeing now that Y Crunch of EST, that now people are adopting it, they need to have high IMC VDD values on Asus to actually run VST reliably. Um, a lot of guys neg uh, neglect VST, and I don't know why. Um, you need it. So, yeah, and um, yeah, funny enough. One Asmus, if you end up seeing that, wait, let me increase my window size for you. Pretty much, what I have deduced is that the main reason why one Osmus re keeps requiring from the guides more VD2, more TX, more this, more that, more this, more that. The whole time it just says more, more, more. The whole time, every single time you error, uh, test number six, test number five, whatever, it doesn't matter. Test number ten. Almost every single test, if you look at some of the guides, they refer to something like either it's this must go up, this must, that must go up, whatever. Even the one, the one time I errored, um, I errored here. Yeah, let me show you quickly. I errored once at the 68. Um, after like an hour, so I errored, let me show you, and this pissed me off by the way, because I wasn't going to go gym, so when this happened, I was upset, because this was, I was meant to go gym, yeah, this was, um, yeah, half past four, this was, this was meant to be done, um, at 10 cycles, and then at like one hour and 10 minutes, I would, I was going to go gym, I was actually quite, 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 um, annoyed with this, but anyway, it errored at 53 minutes, and, um, at this test 13, the guide said that 13 re usually refers to either lack of memory VDD, or VDDQ, or it means, or like, just he just said DRAM voltage, and he said, or SA must be higher because you had some sort of error with how the data was, whatever, something like that. SA must might be higher or something. Basically, IMC increasing voltage or whatever. Notice how my SA in this test attempt was 1.35, and my TX was 1.35 set. LRC up to 1.37. I had 1.9 for my uh, VPPs, and I had 1.9 for my IN. My input voltage. So, what ended up passing, guys? Wait, let me go. What ended up passing? What is this? 1 volt. 1.25 volts. Look. So why, why does this pass 2 hours? Well, a few reasons. Number 1. Was it this? No, it wasn't this. Was it primaries? No, it wasn't primaries. Except it was TRAS. TRAS did increase to 71. Now, did TRAS do it? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe TRAS 71 helped. Um, versus 31. Like, maybe it needed those 40 ticks. Maybe it needed them. But I don't know. Um, so, TRAS 71 was a factor that I changed. I made DG um, 8, 32, T4, 24, double TRTP. I made TWR 48. So, like, 4, 4X. No, no. I, I think I had 16. So, I, I tripled it, basically. I think this one was 16. Hold on. Um... I think the fail was 16, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it was 16. 
The fail was 16, so I, I tripled it. Um, not that it's tripling that helped it, but I made it 48 because of the guy's um, findings. Plus, if you can notice, this was 9720, which, by the way, is TRFC X9, which is 255, multiplied by 384. That's 97920. If you multiply this by um, um, by uh, 512, you get 13560. If you multiply it by uh, uh, 1024, so 1024, multiply by TRFE 9X, or X9, sorry, uh, TRFE um, X9, that's your max DDR5 um, refresh interval, that value you see in BIOS often. Um, actually, the BIOS value is a bit, bit higher, but but this is the right number. It's TRF, TRF um, X9 multiplied by 1024. So it's that it's that value. Um, actually, wait, hold on. Uh, 255 times 10... No, man. Uh, 255 times 1025. No, not even. So yeah, so yeah, it's this. This is the max value you should be at on DDR5. Uh, and then, you know, the one that we always use, 13560 and stuff. Um, I'm using this times by... I think it is... Uh, 128. No, no, no. Yeah, wait. No, no, no. No, I'm wrong. 255 times 256. There we go. 65 to 80. So the one that I'm using, that I've always been using for quite a while now. Um, yeah, so basically, if you notice the the side-by-side... -side, um, not this, man. What am I doing? Yeah, the main, the main determinants were this came down a lot. This went up. This went up, this went up, this went up, and uh, these two went up very negligibly, like very slightly, and this went up. And then besides that, in terms of just voltage incre increases, nothing in the terms of IMC VDD. Um, no, no, kept it at 1.5, left it. Um, uh, was it, was it um, VDIM, like DRAM voltages? No, neither, no point. Um, TX came down by 100 millivolts. SA came down by 350 millivolts. So how on earth did I pass two hours? Simple. The timings. When the timings decreased, it decreased the strain on the data line, and basically it made that whole infinite VD2 conundrum you run into with VST uh, or with, with, with the one asimus. It um, made it null and void. And um, very interesting that like one asimus, that's how it reacts to heat. Number one, because well, from the screenshot you can see the actual um, operating heat was quite high with your rank, and then. So heat's a big factor. Heat will heat in VST. I mean, sorry, heat in one osmosis will make your overtight timing suffer, and you will end up in a situation where you keep on seeing increase VDD2, increase VDD2, increase SA the whole time. Just increase whatever value. Check out every single guide you want on one one osmosis. It'll tell you increase this, increase that, whatever. The problem is that you're running timings that are not um, not realistic to maintain at your heat value at your um, or with, and with your IMC in your motherboard. Like, the signal is not being maintained. Too much IC heat, just a bunch of factors, and um, you have to loosen up some stuff. Um, could I do 7,000? Maybe. I'm going to try. I'm obviously going to try. Um, now that I've learned how to um, work with this config and uh, learned the the um, necessities, and, 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 like, you know, now that I've learned, I can, I can keep some of the timings kind of loose. Um, yeah, I think 7,000 could be doable um, in Monosmus. Um Do I regard... Absolute as stable now? Not really. Um, um, one of Mrs. Config is king. It's just, it's just so hard to pass, man. It's so easy to make mistakes. It punishes you. It really does. One osmosis config punishes you for using values that don't make sense. And that's what's important. Plus, you get a bunch of cycles. The cycle time on one osmosis is very, very short. So on, on 32 gigs of DRAM, um, on Let me turn my aircon off because I've been burning through power lately. Let me just turn that off. I think I'm getting a cold actually from from this cold day blowing on me the whole time. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, let me do this. Anyway, so this is roughly speaking, obviously, guys. It's not exact, but ab about around um, more or less. Okay. Um, so the the one benefit is.
you can see the effects of your values on one entire cycle of what else miss in a very short duration. So basically, the guides that you have, not to hate on them, like they're great guides. The problem is, like I said, they're not totally useful because if you try and use the guides, um, if you try and use the guides um, exclusively, you will run into problems. You will not find your stable settings. Um, the guides won't tell you when you're, for example, running into issues with just your timings being too tight, thereby, and combined with your temperatures, and then thereby, the data line destabilizing. The guides won't tell you exactly where to look. Um, some of those adjustments that you have to do with just pure experience, you will not be able to get from guides. I'm telling you right now, that guy told me that test 13's error was the fix would have been something totally different than what I did, what I did to fix it. To fix it, I just deduced that I thought maybe t ref was a bit too high, and maybe um, those like those sub timings being relieved would help, and I was able to reduce SA, which was counter to the guide. And that to me confirmed that the issue was just the classic old, it's too hard to run, back it off. That's honestly one of the most like crucial and simple pieces of advice in DRAM, DRAM tuning is if something seems totally like a brick wall, unsurmountable and just like completely untestable, maybe you just have to back it off. Like maybe you just have to slow it down a bit. Like sometimes slowing it down really is the um the solution to all of it. And um yeah, it's the most simple solution, and it is sometimes the real one. It's the right solution. It's just is. Um, maybe it doesn't seem that way, but it just sometimes is. And uh, basically, um, the guides help you just get like an idea of when you have those first errors in, in cycle one. Um, if you cycling, if cycle one is erroring and cycle two is erroring, whatever, you have very unstable values. You have to really, you know, besides blue screening, but like you know, just testing and you're erroring all time very early. Your values must be revised um, tremendously. But then once you talk late errors. It's more a matter of heat stability, especially past like half an hour. It's very much a matter of heat stability. It's and your ICs particularly. Um, and even and and the da the data line, you tend to find. I believe you tend to find that data line errors and all must probably occur more towards the first two cycles. I think I think in terms of like pure like TX VDD2 not being able to maintain certain timings. Um, those kinds of errors are just very early and you kind of just run into like a situation where you keep on failing at like 10 minutes or even 7 minutes, 3 minutes, very frustrating. Um, but yeah, so, um, So that's where the guides do help you on for Osmus. Um, but typically speaking, I, I think a big issue with Osmus is, is its, its ability. One Osmus seems actually one Osmus really is heat stable. It's very heat sensitive. It is very heat dependent. I think certain timings on one Osmus would really like benefit from having cold attempts, um, especially stuff like tertiaries and and even like um some sub timings like I said. But then again, like I said again, some sub timings don't even bother testing don't even bother tightening them because I mean they just don't really help you. Um so yeah. But that's the video guys. Dual rank, um sixty eight hundred stable. Um it is stable. I, I call this stable. I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I think this is pretty stable. Um twenty loops of VST, um twenty iterations, sixty seconds long, and um and then you know like you know, two hours of one osmos. Uh, in my opinion, guys, this is pretty damn stable. Um, um, 
And I mean, you know, uh, again, like Chelsea Sonnen says, um, I test, I test. Does it look fine? Yeah. 1.5 set on uh, IMC VDD and uh, 1.5 memory VDD matching data queue. 1.25 TX is very low. Still passes uh, Y Cruncher suggests that this is very easy for the board to run. Very easy for the IMC to run. And uh, SA 1, 1 volt IMC is not even sweating. Yeah, this to me, I think this is a very, very safe, realistic tune that this I would call daily stable. And um, yeah, uh, interesting guys. I hope this helped. Um, 64 gig owners and uh, yeah, one Osmus enthusiast um, alike. Yeah, guys, one Osmus is no joke. But anyway, I will check you guys later on for some more OC content. Cheers.